Okay, so this looks like uh, quite a tricky problem. We're approaching zero from the right, and what we have here is uh, if we try plugging it in, we would get 1 over 0, which is interpreted as uh, infinity, minus another 1 over 0, which is also interpreted as infinity. So we're this is another indeterminate form of the type infinity minus infinity. Okay, so the first thing that we should try to do, since we have uh, two different fractions here, is to try to combine them into one fraction. And so to do that, well, we need the common denominator. So um, this guy, the first fraction, is going to need a square root of x squared plus x top and bottom, and this fraction, the second one's going to need a square root of x. Okay, so if I combine those two, well, I'm going to have one fraction with um, the denominator is going to be square root. Uh, now, since they're both under the square root, I can just bring the um, x inside. So this would be if I multiply the x inside, I would have x cubed plus x squared. x cubed plus x squared. Okay. And then on top, I'm going to have x square root of x squared plus x minus square root of x. Okay. So this looks like uh, quite a conundrum. So, why don't we try doing our, our usual trick that we use. Why don't we multiply by the conjugate? So, if we multiply top and bottom by the conjugate, we would multiply by x squared, square root of x squared plus x, plus square root of x. Top and bottom. And that would give me um, on the numerator I'm going to have x squared plus x minus x and on the denominator I'm just going to have uh, square root of x cubed plus x squared times square root of x squared plus x plus square root of x Okay, now the obvious thing is that these x's cancel. Now, um, not so obviously though, is here, notice that if I factor out an x squared, I would get this, and actually I can take out this x squared outside of the square root as an x. And If I do that, let's see what happens. I'm going to have x squared over um, x square root of x plus 1 times uh, the square root of x squared plus x plus square root of x. And so one of these is going to cancel with this one. And if I now uh, plug in 0, I would get, here I have 1, 0 plus 0 plus 0. So on the numerator, I would have 0. On the denominator, I would also have 0. So this is still an indeterminate form, which means that I haven't quite solved the problem yet. Okay, so let's continue. So let's rewrite it. We have the limit as x approaches 0 from the right of x over square root of x plus 1 times 
square root of x squared plus x plus square root of x. Okay, so this is what we have uh, left over, and uh, we just saw that we still get an indeterminate form, so we have a little bit more work to do. Um, now in calculus, well, sometimes we factor out funny things, and what we're going to do here is we're going to factor out a square root of x. And so if we do that, what's going to happen is we're going to get a, so we're going to leave square root of x plus 1, and then if I factor out a square root of x, I'm going to have um, inside of here I'm going to have a x plus 1 left over inside of the square root and then plus 1. So we basically factor out a square root of x from this one and this one. And notice that if you uh, foil out this square root of x, if you distribute it, you would get back to this point. Okay, and then notice that these two, this square root of x, if you think of it as a fractional exponent, this cancels with one half of this one, and so what we're really left with is a x to the one half on the numerator. And on the denominator, I'm left with square root of x plus 1 times square root of x plus 1 plus 1. And now if I plug in 0, notice that I get uh, 0 on the numerator, but now this time on the denominator I'm going to get um, 0 plus 1 is 1, and then on the inside I get uh, 2. So 0 divided by 2, now that's equal to 0. And that's my answer. Now this happens sometimes in calculus. Uh, it should be noted that back here, this problem could have been made easier if in the very beginning we would have factored out a square root of x from this one. Um, we would have had a much easier time with the simplifications, but that's assuming that you know how to get to the answer before you look at the problem, and of course uh, you don't always do. But as you practice more, you'll get better at recognizing um, the different types of problems and what technique to use in each one. And in this case, we sort of uh, did a little bit more work than was necessary, but eventually we got to the correct answer, which is zero. Okay, so here we have a trigonometric limit. <clears throat> now, the first thing that we'll probably try is to switch uh, cotangent and cosecant in terms of sine and cosine. And maybe that'll allow us to simplify something. Okay. So I know that cotangent is equal to cosine over sine. So let me do that. So let me rewrite it. Cosine over sine. Okay, so that's what cotangent is. And cosecant is 1 over sine. Okay, and if I do my uh, tortilla here, I would get that this is equal to the limit as x approaches pi over 2 of sine x cosine x over sine x. And these guys cancel and if I now plug in pi over 2 here I would get that the limit is equal to 0. <clears throat> 